Hey guys, Ibra here with Hurricane X and welcome back to another video. I just got back from LA yesterday covering Ryzen, uh, the AMD's Ryzen Tech Day event. It was a lot of fun. There were a lot of product launches. Uh, and as most of you are aware, the RX Vega line of GPUs were finally announced. So if you're interested to learn more about those GPUs, I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below. Today we're talking Threadripper and I'm actually really excited for this platform because this is AMD's response to Intel in the high-end desktop market. Personally, this is more exciting to me than Vega, so here's what you need to know. But before that, a quick message from our sponsor. Invest in storage that makes a difference. Choose Toshiba RD400 NVMe SSDs that are incredibly fast and reliable, backed by advanced warranty programs, so you can focus on what matters. RD400, check it out in the description below. Okay, so AMD is targeting Ryzen Threadripper to customers who are primarily software developers, researchers, content creators, and multitasking gamers. If your work requires a numerous amount of cores for processing a large number of data sets, rendering 4K or even 8K videos, streaming while also gaming, Threadripper has you covered. What Threadripper isn't targeting are people who are only looking to game on their systems. I think that's why the Ryzen 7, 5, and 3 processors are meant for. There are three processors that complete the Ryzen Threadripper family, so let's start with the flagship CPU, the 1950X, that's set to retail for around $1,000. This monster is sporting 16 cores with 32 threads and it features a base clock of 3.4 GHz with a boost of up to 4.0. The XFR range on all three SKUs are about 200 MHz higher, so technically single core speeds should hit 4.2 GHz provided adequate cooling. Performance-wise, AMD does claim that it's up to 38% faster than the i9-7900X in Cinebench multi-core and here's another chart showcasing different comparisons. Take this with the grain of salt, guys, because we still have to validate those results in our full performance review, so stay tuned for that. Moving down, we have the 1920X that's priced at $800. It features 12 physical cores with 24 threads, and it's clocked slightly higher than the 1950X, so 3.5 GHz versus 3.4 on the 16-core variant. Boost clock remains the same at 4.0. Once again, you get XFR frequency range of 200 MHz and support for 65 PCI lanes along with quad channel memory support. I should also mention that the 1950X and 1920X have TDPs of 180 watts and are both being launched next week. Lastly, we have the 1900X priced at $550, which will be available on August 31st. This is an 8-core CPU sporting 16 threads and it comes with the same base and boost clock speeds as the 1800X, so 3.8 GHz versus 4.0. Now a lot of you guys might be wondering why would someone opt for this over the 1800X because spec-wise they're almost identical at least for the most part. Here's why. If you're looking to configure a system with multiple GPUs and NVMe drives, this CPU can handle that without a problem because unlike the 1800X that sports 20 PCI lanes and support for dual channel memory, the 1900X supports up to 64 PCI lanes and quad channel DDR4. So that means you won't run into any bandwidth limitations. Intel, I'm sorry, did you hear that, Intel? Here's a brief comparison as to where the 1950X, 1920X, and the 1900X stand with respect to Intel's Skylake X CPUs. This looks very promising, guys, and we can't wait to give you our final verdict on these new Threadripper processors. Okay, so most of you should be aware of the new Socket TR4 mount on these new X399 motherboards. If you're looking for a little glimpse on the chipset, I'll leave our Computex coverage where we got a chance to get our hands-on experience with a few motherboards from ASRock and Gigabyte, so I'll leave links to those in the description. To sum it up, expect a lot of features and we'll make sure to cover that in our Threadripper performance review. And the last thing that I wanted to touch base on is cooling for these new Threadripper CPUs. I mean, looking at the TR4 socket alone brings a lot of questions regarding CPU die coverage and existing coolers being incompatible. Good news is that AMD will be including a mounting bracket for all Acetec liquid coolers, including offerings from NZXT, Corsair, Thermaltake, EVGA, etc. If you're planning to use your existing air coolers, you might run into compatibility issues. Noctua is coming up with a few options that support bigger heat pipes and larger heat spreaders for efficient cooling on these monstrous chips. Air coolers won't be here for at least a few weeks, uh, but I might get my hands on a few of them, so maybe I'll do a, a temperature test comparing AIOs versus air coolers on these new processors. Uh, if you're interested, let us know. So there you have it, a little glimpse to what could potentially turn into an awesome platform for content creators, developers, streamers, and passionate enthusiasts. 
Threadripper completes the entire Ryzen ecosystem, and there is a CPU for pretty much everyone out there. For starters, Ryzen 3 is an excellent option for gamers on a budget, Ryzen 5 steps things up to the mainstream users, Ryzen 7 for enthusiasts, and Ryzen Threadripper for HADT customers. I'm Ebor with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because we will have our full performance review for these new processors coming to you very shortly. So yeah, I guess I'll catch you all in the next one.